Okay, hello again, second time. Um, so yeah, I want to present my Dev Jam project for this year, uh, which is about testing our documentation. Um, so what, what we currently have in our documentation, which has improved a lot during the last uh, weeks, months, and maybe also years, is um, that our documentation shows a lot of code snippets. It um, has a lot of config file examples or in general file examples, um, a whole bunch of shell commands that we show that we intend users to execute, and also a whole bunch of graph commands that um, we show to enable features and configure things in OpenNMS. Um, most of the stuff that we have in our documentation is, can be separated in two things. The first one is step-by-step -step instructions, mostly in the um, installation guide, but also sometimes in the admin manual to enable things, and which is the bigger part. Most of um, our config snippets are just example configurations. Um, most of them incomplete, so they don't show the whole file structure, but just a small snippet. Um, and we intend the user to pick the right parts and place it in their config file and maybe change a little things, just as an example on how to do things in OpenNMS. Um, so what's the point about testing? As a developer, we rely on tools like our development environment, the compiler, and also a test suite that our code is correct and also consistent. Um, if we refactor things, rename things, add new things, um, and also stick things, things components together, um, we rely on that tools to make sure and be confident that all the parts match up correctly, that the names are correct and all the commands we use are correct. Um, and we use continuous integration tools currently, CircleCI, to verify as often as possible that this stuff is correct. So for every change we propose, um, every pull request we open, we run these tests. Um, to also give other people who look at the code confident that this code is almost correct or correct as possible. Um, and especially when it comes to changes over time. So we we had a couple of situations where we rename classes and identifiers, um, where we rename almost all of our Caraf commands and also had syntax changes in our config files. Um, we also want to have these tools to make sure that the documentation reflects the changes we do in code and vice versa. Um, so that's why I come up with the idea a couple of time ago uh, to test our documentation. Um, and by testing, I don't mean to parse the semantics of the document. So I don't want to parse the English language and um, look if the words that are there are, sem are semantically correct. Um, but I want to test the examples we give, and I want to test the commands that we show uh, for the user to to execute, um, I want to do that by using or leveraging the infrastructure we have in our current smoke tests. Our smoke tests provide a quite good framework um, to boot up and complete OpenNMS stack um, with different configurations and in different flavors um, as a Docker environment with multiple Docker containers, and then you can do things with that environment and throw it away afterwards and have a clean start for a different test. Um, the first things I want to do is to just pick the examples we show in the configuration and apply them and see if OpenNMS still starts or if the daemon still starts up. And the second thing is I want to execute the commands that we show in the documentation and maybe not just compare the or check the result if they are working correctly, but also compare the output to um, make sure that the examples, which sometimes contains command output in our documentation, reflects the reality. So to make sure that these show the same that the user is seeing. Um, how I want to do that? <coughs> um, this is a, an, an excerpt of the um, one of our documentation files, an ADOC file. Um, and these ADOC files contain code blocks, which are basically start with four dashes, and then it comes a bunch of um, code or machine readable text or a command or a file example or something like that. And above that code block, we have annotations, which marks this as uh, source code. Um, in that special form, it's XML, which is for a syntax highlighter. Um, and I declared two or a bunch of new annotations for that code block. Um, which start with doc test dash and then something. Um, 
And the first thing I've done here is I've give everything an ID, basically a name, a unique name um, that helps to, to find things and re-identify things. And the second thing is I've defined a target that basically describes what to do with the code in the code block below. Um, in this case, it's a file. So it's a config file that should be written. And then it has a pass where the file should be written. Um, another example from the same config file is it's um, a shell command that we want to execute. Um, it also has ID. Um, it, the thing is that's the basic, the, the, the same ID as in the example before, which basically means these two snippets build some kind of sequence. And the sequence is executed one after another in the same stack. Um, there is no throwaway in between. So you do apply the config file first, and then you execute the command afterwards. That's basically what it means. And in this case, it's a shell command, um, and it should be executed on the OpenNMS Docker container in our stack. And then we have the command in there um, in its whole glory, to which is executed in the stack. Um, the third thing is um, to describe the stack we want to use in that particular sequence, um, you can define the components that the stack should have. Um, and the stack is composed of all components declared on all code blocks in that sequence. Um, so in this case, we also add a minion to that stack. Um, it's there from, from the beginning on. It started with a minion. <coughs> and then we can execute a command in the caref shell of the minion. And it's also part of the same sequence. And the last thing I needed for doing stuff like that is um, besides defining the components, which in this case also adds the Sentinel and Elasticsearch to that stack, is that I have requirements. So some of the sequences we define um, requires other sequences to run in before, um, which are then executed as part of multiple test sequences. So the, the telemetry setup sequence will be executed um, for the JTI documentation and for the BMP documentation and for the IPFIX documentation and so on. Um, and they are all executed in the same stack, and then they are thrown away, and then they are re-executed the next time a different sequence picks up. Um, that's basically it. I've had, got a working prototype, which executes a bunch of tests. Um, code is on GitHub in a private branch. Um, and while doing so, I've found a, some points which are up for discussion, which are not always technical problems. Some of them are, but not all of them. Um, some of them are more conceptual problems that we also have to discuss with the people who are writing the discussion or maintaining the discussion. Um, so I'm pretty open for feedback on that and maybe seeking your help for that. Uh, the first time is the runtime um, of the tests, which is a technical problem. Um, currently, booting up the stack um, and executing only, I don't know, three code blocks takes around about 10 minutes. And I've it's just an estimated guess. Um, we have, I don't know, 400 to 500 code blocks in our documentation, which build up around about 200 sequences, um, maybe less. It's around about. So we end up in 2,000 minutes of runtime, which is quite large. And then we have to decide if we want to spend basically the money for CircleCI to run that stuff and when to run it. We can't run it on every, um, every commit with that maybe we just need to run it for a documentation release, but then we can't track which developer is responsible for the changes. Um, if we want to do that, we have to figure that out. Um, the next thing is the examples that we show in the files must be complete. So all their context must be known. We can't just um, show as an example, and in the polar configuration, we have service definitions. We can't just show the service definition as we do now, but we have to show a complete working polar configuration. Um, it needs a lot of change to our documentation, but I think it's maybe a benefit because we show the context where um, our examples should live in, which we don't do right now. So the user must know in which hierarchy level of the XML, the, the snippet goes and where they are allowed. And by showing a complete um, example, we give that context to the user. So maybe it's also a benefit to have that and enforce that. Um, 
what we also need is most of the tests aren't really verifying. Most of the commands just work, even if they are not correct and just set the wrong config parameters. Um, so we need more steps to verify stuff. And I think that's also a benefit for the user if we can put that into the documentation um, because we also show the user how to verify their setup. Um, but it also it needs more work on the config uh, on the documentation, and it's also a matter of time to add these, I think. Um, and then when it comes to comparing the output of commands, I find really fast that there the output may change. So sometimes our commands outputs internal IDs and sequence numbers and stuff like that, um, which easily change and which are not worth to reflect them in the documentation. Um, so if, as an example, we add a new OSGI bundle, then the bundle ID, if you install a bundle, changes. Um, and then the output in the in, of the command changes. Um, placeholders could be a solution for that, but they're really ugly to show in documentation. So that's something we have to think about. I don't have a solution for that right now. And the last point I've discussed with Ronnie a lot is that currently we show prompts in our documentation. Um, I'm using the prompts to distinguish between input and output in a code block. So which lines of the code block are commands and which one are expected output. Um, with this, we have to specify the prompts somehow and make them, make them uh, unique over the whole document. Um, but there's also some discussion ongoing if we really need these prompts and if they are um, distracting users in different ways. Um, that is basically a discussion on how we do we want to write our documentation and the system for testing has to adopt accordingly. Um, yeah, that's it. I'm happy to get feedback for that idea, um, what you think about it, um, and are really open for discussion. Um, that's it. Thank you. Awesome. Thank you, Dustin. Um, yeah, some good good points there for sure. Um, yeah, I like the uh, one one thing about the, putting the prompts is then it makes it harder to copy paste stuff. <laughs> I've noticed. It's yeah, exactly. And, and, and you can't just take the whole block and, and copy it out. Um, yeah, yeah, exactly. And yeah, and the also there, there there are some some semantics we put into the prompt, which is basically if it's root or if it's an unprivileged user and if it's Caraf shell or not, um, we have to figure that out. It's I, basically that that's not part of the project and it's not a discussion for that particular idea. Um, but our if if we want to do these tests, they have to follow the semantics we have in our documentation. Makes, makes sense. Um, cool. So I guess in, in terms of further discussion on this. Uh, we can always refer to the uh, the discourse post and uh, you know uh, follow up there.